the Riviera Line. The line opened in May 1846 and was later extended to Newton at Bot in December of the same year. After completing the main line to Plymouth, the branch line was opened between Newton at Bot and Torquay in December 1848. On August 2nd, 1959, the line was extended to Paynton, and the branch line was made independent as the Dartmouth and Torquay Railway. Today is a very special day on the Riviera Line. One of the oldest castle class locomotives that worked on the railway back in the 50s has come to visit the railway with a passenger train. wasn't a bad run at all. Had one small water shortage problem near Newton. Other than that, it was plain sailing. Yeah, not bad at all. Bit of a pain getting to paint town as well, to be honest. Well, we're here now, so you can have a break for about an hour. No other trains are scheduled for this platform today. Um... Uh, hello? Why, hello there. Lovely railway, isn't it? Yes, it's a very nice railway to work on. It's a pleasure to work on this railway every day. Yeah, beautiful landscape, beautiful river alongside Exeter, friendly trains running along the line too. <laughs> My name's Patrick, this is Holly. What is your name? My name's Charlie. I used to work on this railway back in the 50s with passenger trains, just like what you're doing right now. That's amazing. I've always imagined what this railway looked like many years ago. Well, I can tell you, it wasn't anything like it is now. There were mainly steam trains running on the line many years ago, but everyone was friendly and all. Until... Until... To put it straight, the first diesel locos that came to the railway weren't the nicest. They treated our steam engines like crap. How they could carry more weight and could go twice as fast as us. Garbage locos. Well, that's terrible. What happened? Well, if you have time, I can go through the story of this railway 60 years ago. Back in the 50s, this station wasn't even Exeter St. David's. It was just Exeter. So many passengers would wait on the platforms for the trains to arrive. Some didn't even go to the platforms to travel. They would just go to take many pictures of bypassing passenger and freight trains, waiting for hours upon hours on end just to see the trains going past. Passengers would also make new friends when traveling, and nobody cared about when the trains arrived. They were just looking forward to the ride, until the diesel era began.
the devil's going on? I don't know, Peter. Looks like Brian would reveal something big. Listen up, listen up. I have a very big surprise to show you all. We have a new addition to our fleet of locos on the Rafi area line. She's come all the way from Doncaster, and I want all of you to treat her nicely and make her feel at home. This is Rachel. She's a new diesel class 37 who'll be running regular passenger services on the line between Exeter and Pinkton. We've modified the timetable to add her into the current running scheme so all passengers and services remain in working order. I hope you will all get to know Rachel as you meet her on your regular journeys. Off you go. We have a big day ahead of us. Rachel wasn't a bad diesel at all. She was very shy, but at the same time, incredibly friendly. Me and Peter were the first to meet her since all the other engines didn't seem to like her. But we both approached her fine. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hello. You two are the first to greet me. Well, we thought it'd be nice to introduce ourselves, since you are new to the team. My name is Peter. And my name's Charlie. We also run passenger trains between Exeter and Paynton. Sometimes we even travel double-headed to increase the seat supply on busy trains. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Say, could you help me around here? I'd really like to know the place. We'd be delighted to. We'll tell you everything you need to know. Charlie here was one of the first ever trains to actually run on this line. Well, that's a fine achievement to have been one of the first trains on this line. Yes, it is, and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> Rachel! Oh, Brian, you startled me there. So you've met Peter and Charlie then? Yes, I have. Or at least they came to me first. Well, that was mighty nice of you, Charlie and Peter. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Tell you what. Why don't you just show Rachel around the line? They actually offered to do that too. Oh, Jesus Christ, lads. You don't even need to ask it anymore, you just do things. 
Uh, I'm getting slow in old age. You still look the same to me, Brian. Well, I'm not getting any younger, much like yourselves. Well, off you go. Don't want to keep the passengers waiting now, do we? Life as it was in the 50s. Whoa, that was a pretty entertaining story, I must say. I quite enjoy it too, but I'm actually almost late to depart. I hope to see you around again later. I don't know what to say. 50s Riviera doesn't sound too bad though. That's not the worst part. Rachel was a nice loco. I haven't told you about the other two diesels yet. More of them? Were they as nice as Rachel? What actually happened to Rachel anyway? No, they weren't as nice as Rachel. Absolute arses, if anything. Wow, and I was just coming to like your story too. They didn't come until much later though. Some of the steam engines didn't like Rachel though because they thought she was here to steal our jobs. But she was a nice diesel loco. She even agreed to date Peter at one point. <laughs> oh, that was a funny time. <laughs> wow, that's actually quite funny. But you didn't answer my other question. What actually happened to Rachel? I'll carry on with the story and let you know.
Oh my, that was so much fun. <laughs> I think I'll get used to this line very quickly. Oh, there's a lot more than that. I can tell you now. And a lot of new things you'll see. I've been here 50 years and still see new things as I run along the line. Oh well. I suppose I won't see everything along this line then. Maybe you will. Depends on how lucky you are, I suppose. Well, there we are. Anyway, I thought I might tell you something. It's kind of a secret, so don't go telling anyone else. What is it? Well, when I was being built at Doncaster, I heard that there were two more diesel locals being built for this railway. That's not too bad, is it? Well, from what I heard, they weren't very pleasant. Foul mouse, the workers would call them. But they were ordered by the CEO of British Railways for this railway specifically. I think he's trying to take over this railway too. I don't think anyone could buy this railway. Brian won't allow it. Not for a million pounds. He likes this railway too much. He inherited it from his father. Charming guy he was too. But sadly passed away about 10 years after taking over the railway and passed it on to Brian, who's owned it ever since. 30 years it's been with Brian and not a day went by without him saying hello. Well I'm warning you, the CEO of British Railways won't give up easily. If he's got to fight for this railway, he sure as hell will. Quick question. Since the two other diesels are called foul mouths, what are you classed as? They call us charmers because we're very nice and adapt well to new surroundings. Foul mouths are horrid. Bad manners, bad language, much like the CEO of BR if I must be truly honest. Oh my. And do you know when they'll come? Well, I overheard that Brian simply won't allow such trains to run on the Riviera. This is a nice railway and Brian doesn't want some bigot engines to spoil it. That's why the CEO of BR wants to buy the railway. He wants this railway to be diesel only and will stop at nothing until his wish is granted. I don't want them to come here either. They seem like real twats to me. Peter, I'm sure we'll be fine. It'll probably be another few years before they get here anyway, and we'd be lucky not to be scrapped by the time they get here. <laughs> well, I just hope they don't come here while I'm here. Come on now, anyway. We're getting late, and our passengers are getting curious about what we're talking about. Well, it's still a very interesting story, but you haven't gone over the part where Peter and Rachel started dating. Oh yeah, almost forgot that myself. When do you have to leave though? Uh, in 10 minutes. Well, I can definitely go over this part in that time, but the rest will have to wait for another time. Well, get to it. I want to see this part. Well, let's get it over with. Look, Peter, when are you going to tell him? I'm a little nervous, Charlie. When was the last time you liked someone? Likewise, when was the last time you liked someone who's still hated by pretty much everyone else? I don't want to lose my old friends. Most of the other trains I've talked to have said they actually like her now. Jason also even said that he loves her too. Look, here it comes now. Hello, ladies. Morning, James. Hi, James. My goodness, Peter. What's got your boiler bubbling? Um, nothing. You sure? Doesn't sound like nothing. It seems you have something on your mind. In love, are you? <laughs> James, can we have a little privacy? As nice a friend you are, you can be quite the annoying one. What are friends for, eh? Well, if it's privacy you want, then I will let you do it. I'm running late anyway. Catch you up later. See you later, James.
Hello, beautiful. James is gone now. Now's a better time than ever to talk to her. To ask her. I know her timetable and she's due to leave in a few minutes, so you better make it quick. You know what, Charlie? I think I will. James isn't getting anywhere near Rachel on my watch. That's the spirit. Now go chase your fantasy. Breaths. Deep breaths. Hi, Rachel. Oh, uh, hi, Peter. C could I ask you something? Um, if you can make it quick, then sure. I'm due to depart in a few minutes, and my driver gets really angry if we're even a second late to depart. Okay, well, um, what I, um, wanted to ask was... Right, time to go. Okay, just give me a couple seconds. Come on, make it quick. Well, uh... Come on, Rachel, we need to go now. You can talk to Peter later. Okay, driver. I'll talk to you later, okay? Um, okay. Rachel! Whatever you do, please don't talk to James at Peyton. Wasn't really planning on it. See you later. So, did you do it? Well, not exactly, but I reminded her not to speak to James, and she told me she wasn't planning on it. Well, at least we've had one positive thing from today. Come on, let's make our way back to Exeter. Brian needs to see it before we end the day. Charlie? Will we see Rachel at Exeter? We might do. Depends if we'll still be at Exeter by the time she gets back. I know she needs to go back to Exeter, but it'll be a while before she does. That doesn't bother me, as long as we see her. Well, that's alright then. I'll stay with you to keep you company. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Anyway, let's make our way back to Exeter. We're already late, but we can make up lost time since we only need to stop at Dawlish on the way back. That's a very nice story so far, but you still didn't go over the part where they started dating. Love takes time, my friend. You've got to be patient. I'll go over that part next time. But 
when will I see you again? Hopefully at Painton. Yours and Holly's timetable seem to meet at Painton, and I should be there around an hour before Holly departs. Well, that's great. Can I tell this part of the story to Holly? Of course. The story is for the both of you. And before I go, can I tell you a secret? Yes, but I'm guessing it's something to do with Holly. Well, yes. I'm sort of in love with her, but haven't told her. Well, that's nice. You should tell her when you're at painting. Yes, of course, but I'm a little nervous about it. Just like Peter was. Just go with it. See if she likes you first, though. Take it slow. Take your time. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Anyway, I must go or I will be late. I will see you at Painton. As will I. I'll see you and Holly at Painton. What an interesting story. And to tell Holly the truth, going to take a lot of nerve. I will just do it. I will follow Charlie's advice and do it. <laughs>